Hello, and welcome to this episode of Geeking Off, where we're going to play with the Raspberry Pi 2. Computers. Gaming. Retro gear. Devices. Tech reviews. And more. Geeking Off with Android. Yes, I got this in the mail. And it's a little kit that you saw from the earlier clip. I did order that kit. So let's go ahead and unplastic this. Inside we've got Raspberry Pi 2 in a box. Um, note this kit does not include a micro SD card or HDMI cable. These components are mentioned. Okay. That was nice of them to let us know that. And here's the plastic uh, case. Kind of similar to my other green one. Comes with two little screws in there. It just pops open. Yep. And the screws. Okay. So open this bad boy. And of course, this one also includes a quad core um, CPU. One. I think it's about 900 gigahertz. I mean, not <laughs> gigahertz, megahertz. A gigabyte of RAM. Micro SD slot. So they changed the. SD slot on this one, I see. Okay, comes with a very nice manual. Wow, I don't even think the first one I got came with a nice little little manual. I it just came with this. So let's go ahead and see what we got here. Now, question on on many videos and other pictures, I was curious about the SD card slot. It is a micro SD card slot, and it's on the bottom. So there we go. It's the first time it's been in video. Um, and then of course we got our four USB ports, Ethernet, audio, HDMI, and power. So yeah, let's get this into the this little case here. Here we go. Got it in there. A little fighting, but it's in there now. All right, let's get this bad boy hooked up, shall we? All right, to get started, let's go ahead and clear the partitions. All right, and see if there's anything on there. Nope. We're gonna start a new primary. And this will be partition one. Hit enter there, and then we're gonna go plus 100 M. Ta-da! Okay, now it's time to type T. And then we're just gonna do a C. And we're good to go there. Now we can go to a new type of partition. And we're gonna go ahead and hit two for this one and enter twice. And now that we're all done, we can write that to the disk. <clears throat> okay. And there we go. Make sure to do all of these commands with the sudo. Okay. <clears throat> Hit the file system. Okay. Again, forgot the pseudo. Go ahead and mount this now. And we will wait for this to download. All right, now we're gonna paste the next command in. Let's go ahead and move them in. Oh, and again. All right, well this is my make makeshift setup for now. <clears throat> HDMI going over to the TV, and we got an ethernet in there, we got the keyboard, got our micro SD card in there. Now, time to power this bad boy up. LED lights are on, and it is go. It's loading up. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. Looks like we got a login. We're good to set this up. So I'm going to do some setting up here so I can SSH over there. 
All right. All right. I think it's time now to um, SSH into this. Default user is root, of course. Password is root. All right. Now we are SSH'd into the new uh, Raspberry Pi 2 running Arch, as you can see here. So first of all, what we need to do is, um, of course, change the root's password. Okay. All right. Now let's go ahead and add a user. Okay. We're going to update the system. All right. <clears throat> I don't know how far behind this is, but we'll go ahead and update everything. Okay. <clears throat> now that the update's complete, we're going to go ahead and <clears throat> start installing packages. Let's install a few. I'm um, trying to think what else would I would need. Let's do those two. That's all I can think about right now. All right. <clears throat> now we need to add our new user to the group. Uh, get past all that crap. That's good, so what we'll do, we'll issue a restart on it. Um, okay. And then when it comes back online here, we're going to now log in as the new user. I guess we can start, because I want to install the Mate uh, desktop environment on here, so Let's go ahead and install that. Um, so we want to install, um, install Mate and Mate Extra. That's a big install. <clears throat> okay, we are installed. <clears throat> A few things I want to do here. Let's see um, um, how much space that ate up. Well, we got plenty, plenty of space free. All right, let's go ahead and reboot this thing. All right, let's reboot. All righty. Try to log into this. I actually forgot a critical step here, and these packages need to be installed before you can boot. <laughs> Let's try this again. Okay, got some more configurations to do. All right, success. We are booted in to a desktop. So now I'm gonna try installing some apps like Firefox and uh, maybe uh, LibreOffice and a few others and we'll check out its performance and see how it performs. Well, YouTube runs, the browser runs. Sometimes <clears throat> it pauses like that. But it is watchable, but not in HD, so you have to leave it on the it 480 setting. Um, yeah, the 480. And it runs okay, but I think it probably will chop itself up when I go full screen, though, I bet. Yeah. So, I mean, for like a media center TV like I have with my mini down there, definitely not a replacement for it. I'm more interested in like seeing how this would perform like as like 
the workstation at work. So let's continue on with our tests. All right, well, after using this thing for about a week, I'm discovering I'm running out of memory. And I didn't put a swap partition onto the Raspberry Pi disk. So what I'm doing now is just backing it up. So I've done a lot of work, a lot of configurations to get it working up this far. So as soon as that's done, I am going to then add a swap partition. All right, so I'm hoping that a 2.5 gigabyte uh, swap partition should be more than enough, I hope. All right, we got the swap partition all set up. Now let's see if this helps improve my performance. So far, it works. It's a little bit sluggish. Um, I might attempt to overclock it, get some heat sinks for it, and see if that kind of takes the sluggishness out of it. But so far, I'm getting work done with this makeshift workstation. Okay, now we're back. Um, the Raspberry Pi 2 is working wonderfully as a workstation. But I want to overclock it to kind of take up a little bit of the edge out of it. And so, I've got this little overclocking kit. Isn't it cute? <laughs> it is. So, and also, I don't know if this is going to work. It's kind of an experiment. Is I have dual monitors at work, so I want to try to see if I can use this USB VGA adapter to get the second monitor to work. So, <clears throat> What should we unbox first? Let's unbox this. Okay. Maybe not. Ah, there it goes. Okay. Kind of a cool little box. Go ahead and open it. A lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. I was like, oh, this thing's going to be as big as the box, but no. <laughs> it's just... We'll make it look bigger than it really is. But yeah, it's pretty big. I mean, compared to the pie. USB goes on that side, it's got an LED on it, and there's your VGA. Okay, what else have we got in the box here? Underneath the box, it says we've got a, I like a piece of paper, very poorly printed actually. One of these. Um, this is a driver for all Windows. According to the box, it says the Mac OS um, drivers and the Linux drivers are open source, so we'll see how that goes. Let's go ahead and open this up. It comes with a USB cable. And this, of course, just plugs into the back like that. And hopefully, it'll go into here, such as so. We got this little heat sink and fan kit. Let's go ahead and unplastic this. And it comes with, I believe this is for one of the chips. It's a little bit bigger. And then we get this cute little CPU fan on there. Looks like it's got some type of adhesive on it. Um, let's go ahead and open up our pie here. We got this ready. I'm going to take this little blue adhesive thingy off. I'm guessing this is just going to go right on here. Okay. Huh. It's kind of a weird way for it to go on. Alright, let's get our other heat sink on there. Take the blue wrapping off. Position it. Now the question is, will this case close up? Okay, I'm gonna have a problem here with this case. I'm gonna have to break this little plastic thing off, otherwise it goes right into the fan. Positive is supposed to go here. Negative here. Okay, now let's go ahead and take this little piece of plastic off of here so it doesn't jam in the fan. Right off of there, cool. Let's see how it's gonna fit now. Cool. We're all ready to go. Well, no fans moving. Not very loud. 
Somebody in the reviews was saying this thing screeches really loud. Okay, we've got it working. Well, kind of. The little fan works great. We haven't overclocked yet, but this is really weird. Monitor one is just displaying the output of that. So I think I have a little bit more configuration to do here. It was cool, but weird. So this is working. It's working there. I like this last part on here. For Linux, Display Link provides open source libraries. Drivers are community written. DisplayLink.org has details for advanced and adventurous users. Well, am I one of them? I say yes. It is now dual monitored. Oh, yes. Next step is to overclock this bad boy, but I can't because my um, my power adapter. I'm using a cell phone one right now, which only has um, what do you call it, one amp. My 2.5 is at work. So, till then, we'll have to wait on the overclocking. But so far, so good. All right. So now it's time for my final thoughts here. All right. Well, first of all. Um, here you can see the um, fully working Raspberry Pi 2 workstation with dual monitors. Yes, it works really great. I have been using it now for about a week, and so far it's not super fast, but it is fast enough to get the work done that I need to do. So no complaints there. I can do everything I need to do at work with the Raspberry Pi 2. Now, I did try to overclock this thing. At first I overclocked it to about 1.1 gigahertz and it was so unstable it just it, every time I opened a program it just crashed so I then tried to dumb it down to 1 gigahertz it ran for a little bit but random processes like you know the network driver or the sound driver would just crash and just make everything miserable and I had to reboot every hour or so so then I decided to go with the 950 megahertz option and that is its perfect little sweet spot. So right there, it works perfect and stably, so that's where it's gonna be while I use it as my workstation. Now, as you can see here um, with the dual monitors, on one monitor here, as you can see, the video kinda is a little laggy. Maybe that's because it's a USB device, I'm not quite sure. But here on the other monitor, it is butter smooth. As you can see here, I did notice a little bit of noise coming from the fan, but it's a nice little comfortable noise. I kind of like it. It, it kind of soothes me. I like its little fan noises. So all in all, the Raspberry Pi 2 makes a wonderful, wonderful workstation. And I think once they come out with the Raspberry Pi 3, oh, man, this Raspberry project is just beautiful and perfect. And if you want to try it out, Go ahead, try it out. You'll be surprised. You can run your office suite in here. You can browse the web. Um, I use it mostly for remote desktop work, so it is perfect for my use case scenario. Only issue, of course, was connecting to the Microsoft Exchange server for email. Um, but after some tweaking around, I did get it to work. So with uh, Mozilla, Firefox, and using uh, not Firefox, uh, Thunderbird, and Dabmail. So. There you go. There it is. My Arch Linux Raspberry Pi 2 workstation. All right, so it's time to wrap up this Raspberry Pi 2 workstation project. So yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm loving it. And I think I'm gonna continue to use it till I kill it. Um, for any last notes, I know I put the swap partition on a, you know, what do you call it? A little flash drive, you know, flash card. But, you know, for how cheap they are, I'm not worried about burning it up. Just make sure I back it up every once in a while. So, with that, I'm going to end this Geeking Off episode. So this is Anthony from Anthler, and from this time and every time on, folks, keep on clicking. Also, bonus footage. I originally was going to make a video on the Raspberry Pi 1, but unfortunately, I never finished it. So enjoy the bonus footage after the outro.
we got this cool Re Mini uh, keyboard and mouse with laser pointer. We've got a Raspberry Pi case here. We've got a Raspberry Pi, 8GB SD card preloaded, and a wireless adapter. For this is the Re Mini, world's most smallest wireless keyboard and mouse projector uh, combo. No, pr present, and well, yeah, you get the idea. It's used for presentations. Um, we got a touchpad, um, some typing area, um, power switch, mini USB for charging, the USB adapter for plugging into your computer, laptop, etc. I got here a green, ah, it comes out of the box. There. Raspberry Pi case. Ah, it's got push in points. There we go. And of course, in here is the heart of the beast the uh, Raspberry Pi. Upside down. There it is. All in its glory. Ah, it snaps in. Okay. Use a little force. That kind of stuff makes me nervous. And there we go. We've got a Raspberry Pi assembled. I'm guessing the SD card goes in here. Like that. Now, we've got a wireless, you know, so we get some internet on this baby. And some networking. Oh my god, that thing's tiny. There we go. Now, we need to hook this up to the TV. Okay. Got lights on. Screen yet? Oh, the screen's doing something. There we go. There we go. It's got me a screen. I got a mouse pointer. It looks like. Ooh, it's kind of fast. <laughs>